Hey guys, so today we are going to be reading Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs um, for our large group reading. And yesterday we read Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So we are going to see how this book is like Goldilocks and the Three Bears or how it's different um, after we read the story, okay? So Goldilocks and the Three Bear, or the Three Dinosaurs, and it's as retold by Mo Williams. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. Once upon a time, there was, there were three dinosaurs, Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway, which is a country outside the United States. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud booming voice. It's finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. He he he. Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens to be our unlocked home while we are, uh, someplace else. So succulent, it just means they taste really good. Har, 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 har. Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. So Norwegian is the language that they speak in Norway. The three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. So unsuspecting, it means that they don't really know that they're coming into a house full of dinosaurs. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came running along. Just then the far forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, gotcha, but I'm pretty sure that was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, be patient, Papa Dinosaur, the trap is not yet sprung but that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks had never listened to warnings about the dangers of going into strange big houses. As soon as Goldilocks came across a strange big house, she barged right in. That just means she, she just went right in. She didn't stop, she just kept going. Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks, that chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very, very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it anyways, because hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. The third bowl of pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. Soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate filled little girl bonbons, which is like a chocolate, which by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, that means she's very sleepy. Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. She climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall, but the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair. So she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? Groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that lived here must be nuts. 
Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious, chocolate-filled little girl. Bonbons are yummier than, we've, than, they've, than they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping, stopping and thinking. Home sweet dinosaur home. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, now, or charge, or the Norwegian expression for chewy bonbon time. Suddenly and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door, but they were too late. Goldilocks was gone and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. And the moral is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. So that is the end of our book for today. And that was called Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to make a chart. And your parents can help you. That looks like this on a sheet of paper and on both sides, I want you to include I want you to include the characters on each book. So this is the first one is Goldilocks and the three bears. And the second one is Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. So I want you to include the characters from each story. And I want you to include where the story took place. And I want you to include what type of food was in each story. Because they might be the same or they might be different, but I want you to tell me. So once you do that, you can upload that picture to Class Dojo. You can upload it to your portfolio, or I know some of you guys had problems last week where it wasn't uploading. So you can send it to me in a message on Class Dojo. Okay, I hope you guys liked the book today. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.